I'm hitting record, so uh, when, count yourself down. Go ahead. Okay. Three, two. Well, welcome, everybody. It's another podcast of the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. I'm Sven Hosford, uh, the publisher of said podcast and print magazine. And I'm having a wonderful, excellent, uh, outstanding opportunity to practice lifestyle medicine. Uh, right this minute, I'm dealing with some uh, eye surgery. So if it looks like I'm coming to you from a darkened cave in a secure bunker, uh, there's a reason for that. I want to thank uh, Mike, uh, the, the bionic man, Sorg, for uh, stepping in last week and uh, Linda Means for being a great guest. And I also want to thank Bob Jans uh, for lending me a massage chair, chair, chair massage chair. Uh, and I needed that to keep my face uh, pointing towards the floor, which is what you do after detached retina surgery. So big help uh, and very much uh, a lot of gratitude to Bob Chance for that. And as you can see, I'm phoning it in this week. Uh, what are you going to do, right? But uh, the print issue is still going to happen. we got another issue coming out. Uh, the fall issue is still out there on the streets. And uh, the winter issue will just be a couple weeks uh, delayed from normal. But uh, if you'd like to be in that, be sure to give me, uh, drop me an email at svenhosford at gmail.com. Coming up in this podcast, Judy Hollowell is a master energy healer, and she's now working with uh, Joyce Sacconi, who is a naturopathic doctor on the north side. She's got a great group of women that she's collected, a very powerful, very diverse group of healers. And uh, we're going to look to Judy to talk about what she does, which is counseling and life coaching guidance in all aspects of health, career, finances, relationship, and I can tell you from firsthand experience uh, dealing with post-eye surgery, as she was a, a visitor for me here this week. Uh, she is a she studies the sciences of the body and the mind, and that coupled with her gift of intuition has really given her an ability to help clients at the very core level. And uh, it re something really did shift for me this week. So we'll be talking about that. She uses a variety of modalities, some of which you may have heard of, some of which I'm sure you have not. But we'll be discussing the mind, body, unity, and energy, energy healing. What is it? So coming up in future podcasts, uh, next week, we're going to have Caitlin Lasky on. She is uh, the founder of the Pittsburgh Yoga Collective. Really exciting group. Uh, what they do is get yoga in front of and uh, offer yoga to people who would not necessarily not necessarily normally get to do it, such as uh, children in Braddock. She really specializes in dealing with uh, uh, people who've dealt with trauma and using yoga as a therapy for that. So really looking forward to that conversation. And really, uh, so many great guests are coming up in the future. You can't even stand it. December 9th, we've got Lainey Francis, Dr. Lainey Francis of the Integrative Oncology Department Hillman Cancer Center. Can you believe it? Somebody from UPMC is going to be on this podcast right here. So uh, she recently had a, a wellness expo that featured nutrition, yoga, and Reiki demos and practitioners right there in the Hillman Cancer Center. Can you believe it? Pinch me. So before we get to our guests, let's get a touch base a little bit with the calendar and what has been happening and what is going to happen. Uh, the biggest news for the last couple of months has been Juice Fest. That happened last weekend. Congratulations to Trenton and the whole Get Organically Social gang or the Organically Social gang uh, and all the vendors and all the people who were uh, in the contest. It was a contest. Uh, real quick, the meanest green went to Urban Touch Juice Lab for their chlorophyll. The most unique juice was Good Life Juice's Pam. The best seasonal juice was Urban Touch Juice Lab, the pumpkin juice. The best smoothie, Salud Juicery Green Anna. People's Choice, Salud Juicery, a Green Anna again. I'm going to have to go try that one. And the uh, Judge's Choice, the Urban Touch Juice Lab Chlorophyll. So congratulations to all of the winners there. And uh, looking ahead in the calendar, this is kind of an interesting thing. If uh, you would rather not fight the crowds on Black Friday, how about a free drumming and chanting session with Jim Donovan? If you remember, he was on the podcast here a couple of weeks ago talking about uh, his career in the rock and roll world and now what he does with teaching drumming. And it's a free workshop at Moonglow Yoga, 7.30 to 9, Black Friday, the day after uh, Thanksgiving, which is coming up just next week. So that's all we got in the calendar right now. Coming up next, we'll be talking with Judy Hollowell. Well, 
Well, Judy Hollowell is a master energy healer. And we're going to explore all that, what that means. She provides counseling and life coaching for guidance in all aspects of life, health, career, finances, relationships, and now post eyeball surgery. Uh, Judy's uh, study of sciences of the body and the mind, coupled with her gift of intuition, gives her a unique ability to help clients at a very core level. She uses a variety of modalities that includes, but is not limited to, bioenergetics, biogenesis, hypnotherapy, kinesiology, guided meditation, resilience and regression therapies, inner child work, harmonizing energy centers, color gem therapy, <gasps> intuitive counseling, and soul toning, trademarked because she created that. So looking forward to this conversation. Uh, Judy's clients are ready for real change. And that's why I was really happy to have her come and visit me this week because I'm ready for some real change. And even though she worked on me while I was face down in a massage chair, uh, she did some really interesting work. So welcome, Judy Hollowell. Hello, hello. <laughs> Trying to contain your excitement. <laughs> Hey, thank you very much for, for making the house call this week. Uh, it was very much appreciated. And, uh, you know, it was kind of uh, on this. You were on the schedule to be on the podcast anyway. And then I had my little uh, minor uh, uh, eye crisis. And so you were generous enough and kind enough to come out and uh, treat me to a session. Uh, it was very, very interesting. And uh, so I'd like to discuss energy healing in particular and uh or, or in general but in particular how energy healing really gets to the core issue do you want to talk a little bit about that can you for, for somebody who's never really understood the term can you describe energy in the term that uh, and how you use it in your healing i think that energy starts even with unity consciousness and the energy of uh quantum physics and being a part of everything and what affects one affects all and the energy that uh, of the body has been affected by the aspects of daily living, our experiences. And those experiences then create within us a cellular memory. And that cellular memory then uh, is the mind-body connection that then plays out in our lives. And that is the energy of what we consider life. And how is it that, that working at that level, uh, you know, some of these terms are going to be a little bit vague for some people. Maybe we should take a step back and um, give, give me your best explanation of unity consciousness. What exactly does that mean? Um, my interpretation of unity consciousness is that, that there is uh, a greater uh, being or a greater force of energy, a source that has uh, uh, allowed us to be a part of creation and in that creation it came from all of the uh, same energy which I believe I like to refer to as an energy of love mm -hmm. and then with the unity consciousness is that we have the ability and uh, because of being one with all uh, everything that we've ever done need to know uh, we can tap into that consciousness and find the answers to all questions, all, all things. It's already available to us. It's just a matter of quieting ourselves and, and being a part of that energy. Okay, so for a lot of doctors, when you talk about trying to quiet the mind, you know, so they can get in touch with that unity consciousness that dwells within them, uh, that's going to be a pretty tough task. Is there, is there any specific tools you have to help people to get to that quiet mind? I have what I refer to as my toolbox, and one of the aspects in my toolbox is a way to meditate, and it would be to set your phone for 20 minutes, and that way you don't have to keep checking the clock to see if you've got your, you know, if my time's up or not. You automatically know it. The other thing I ask is to write down the question that you want to meditate on. And that helps you focus on one particular thing at a time rather than having scattered mind. And then I ask to make the statement that I am one with my creator. And in unity consciousness, I ask that all that I need, I'm willing to accept to come before me now. 
uh, and then state that out loud and then be quiet. You know, it's to show up, be quiet, listen. And one of the key parts to that exercise is to have that piece of paper and pencil next to you and just write automatically what comes to you, just the short verbiage, the one word, whatever it is, and then go right back into meditation. There, because there may be more that's coming at the end of the 20 minutes, then you sit and you go over what you've written down, the, the one words or the little fragments of sentences, and then review what those answers mean to you. And in the work that I do with uh, every client, I suggest that they journal very strongly. I suggest that they journal because journaling is the aspect of getting more information, getting energy moving and becoming more enlightened. Well, and let's let's talk about language a little bit, because uh, I know in your toolbox uh, of tools, which is, is, a, is a mighty toolbox, um, language is a really, really important thing. Uh, and when you're, when you're working with energy, uh, you did make a point of telling me that, you know, it's very important that you use precisely the right words. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. In that, uh, language is very important. When I work with a client, I have an intake form and that intake form. Then when I go over it, working with them, I listen to every word they say and the, the verbiage that comes from that intake, the verbiage, and, and just in, in general, people that I deal with, um, you can hear repeating patterns, you can hear belief systems and all of that. One of the very core aspects of working uh, with me would be to understand that I am has a very, uh, at a very basic level, claiming what you are. I am healthy. I am sick. There's a, a major difference about claiming what I am. And when you use the words I am or I have, be sure that that's really and truly what you are and what you, what you are, you know, what you want to have. Yeah. Now, you know, this is an interesting topic to talk about words because, you know, the thing about energy healing is that is generally in my opinion, and in a lot of people's opinion, more powerful form of therapy than just talk therapy. And yet words are such an important part of energy work as well, uh, to the point where you, you and you just said uh, journaling is so important. Do you want to talk a little bit about journaling and how you use that as, as a tool in your practice? Well, there's a combination there. The, the talk therapy it's beneficial, but it, I'll start with that. In the work that we do, the talk is important, but establishing what your learned beliefs are and what your false beliefs are come through that conversation that usually I'm having with my client. Mm -hmm. And we establish what your truths are and revisit and question whether those are working for you. You can establish those truths from other people, from your family, from religion, from all different you know, variety of ways to in life. And one of the aspects then of learning what your truths are by questioning, you know, your words and what you're telling me that, you know, I am whatever. In journaling, we then start and make a list of what I am, what, what your truths are. In knowing what those truths are, that's the basis of your foundation. And then you can move forward and attract through your words, through your thoughts, and journaling helps if you express where those uh, core beliefs came from. A lot of times the journal will have your homework in it, homework or toolbox. Uh, the toolbox has the different aspects that uh, one, of the, one of the tools that I use is called pick and flick. Pick and flick is very important in that when you have a repeating thought process that comes, most people just want to avoid thinking about it. When I work with clients, I suggest that they allow that thought to come in, which is powerful because then you're making a choice. The choice is that you are choosing not to think about it. Pick and flick is actually taking your hand, putting it on your forehead and taking that thought and flicking it away. That way you're making not only a mental uh decision to do that you're having a physical aspect that follows it so it, it's more powerful and that that helps with the uh to unlock the cellular memories that we, you talked about earlier 
It basically helps with mind chatter. The uh, cellular memory comes from uh, negative uh, repeating patterns established in the mind and the heart connection, uh, established belief systems on the faults and learned beliefs. And it's a deep level of an emotional connection with uh, words or actions or uh, that hit you emotionally at a very core level that's left an impression on your, on your energetic body. Mm. Okay, so Judy, the, the one thing I really like about what you talk about is this whole idea about beliefs and false beliefs. And it seems to me that if we're going to break uh, bad patterns, bad habits, and they're, they're uh, based upon false beliefs, that it's really important to get to the core of that. What's a, what's a real belief and what's a false belief? Can you talk a little bit about that process, how that works, and how it comes out in the journaling, especially? Um, all of that is a, a pretty good process in that we would start with understanding uh, a lot of times the vocabulary, the words that are being said in a session, and those words then point to uh, belief systems on that belief. If it's a false belief, for a lot of times they have to do with self-worth and value. You've heard as a child, you know, you're a piece of crap, you haven't worth anything, you're not good enough. Uh, those repeating patterns as a child, let's say you hear, uh, most recently worked with a client that uh, around seven was physically abused and verbally abused. And, you know, those patterns come out in his vocabulary and that directly in alignment with his value his value system for himself, then in forming relationships, uh, you know, uh, was difficult in that he didn't believe he was worth having a good relationship. So in working with him and understanding that his belief system says, I'm not worth anything, I have little value, uh, we talk about where that came from. It came from the seven-year-old that was verbally and physically abused and just most recently was abused again by the father. Um, all that brought up those same old memories. So working with those memories, we actually went in and did a inner child healing. That inner child healing had to take him back to that time, deal with the emotions online. He then, journ his homework then, was to journal about that period of time, what was going on, how he felt, um, and being able then to go to our next session and create truths that no longer are based on his father's belief system, his abuse, and, and those types of situations. This, is, uh, this whole area, I think, is so fascinating. And... I know everybody that gets into the world of energy work of some kind, uh, they all have a different path on how they got there. Can you talk a little bit about your background? Um, you, I mentioned hypnotherapy. Can you talk about how, what, what your transition was like uh, from uh, you know, the different types of healing that you've been exposed to and the different types of training? And how, how did you get to where you are today? Um, initially I started with hypnotherapy many years ago, over 20 years ago, and during the practice of hypnotherapy, went to, uh, many sessions, went through many sessions, gave many sessions. The aspect that I learned at that time was that our body only allows us to reveal to us what we're able to, to handle in that moment. Uh, it's our little safeguard. And for me, my safeguard was that I had no recall, even through hypnotherapy, which you can use, you can go do past lives, you can go almost anywhere through hypnotherapy. And from five, uh, from zero to five, there was no recall. And so there seemed to be something online that was uh, a traumatic event or something, trauma, trauma of some sort happened for me not to be able to go back there. So after many years of hypnotherapy, I came finally to uh, Pittsburgh and met a person here who learned from Alexander Lowen bioenergetics. Through bioenergetics, uh, then 
learned uh, that I had been sexually abused from about six months old to about five years old when I started school. That came through that process. From hypnotherapy to bioenergetics, I basically went in and learned about many different modalities, stones, oils, Bach flower remedies. Um, I specialized at that time in chakra clearing and balancing your energy system. Uh, and then from that point, just continued. Most recently, within the last five or six years, I've done kinesiology, uh, which is uh, traditional applied kinesiology and specialized kinesiology. Um, those are those are some of the many aspects that I've taken and gone to a level of, um, except for kinesiology, a teacher level, so that I can be very good at what I do. Mm -hmm. And that's how, in going through those processes, I came with uh, Soul Tony. Yeah, yeah. I want to get to that. Let, let's talk a little bit about bioenergetics. Can you describe what that is a little bit? Bioenergetics deals with the energy of the body, and it's basically to get energy moving. Uh, I use different aspects of a lot of different modalities. Uh, bioenergetics, I use a process that I call awe out, and it would be standing with your feet a little more than shoulder width apart, uh, toes slightly bent inward, and you literally breathe in through your nose and you exhale, you lean over vertebrae by vertebrae and all out to the floor. Just release, oh, just let it go. And it's just to release energy, release tension, get energy moving. And it's really great to start a process together because we want to get energy moving. When energy moves, it becomes uh, easier for us to access that information through our awareness. That seems to be the big, um, the biggest thing with energy is you get stuck. Um, I know with acupuncture, that's a big thing is to get energy moving that's stuck. Um, it seems to be a, a, a pretty recurring problem. How is it? Is it part of this? Um, well, just explain. How does energy get stuck? I mean, how does it stop moving in our bodies? It can get stuck in a lot of ways, physically, uh, you know, environmentally, it can be stuck. Uh, the things around us, the people around us can cause us to have stuck energy. We just hold our breaths. I think one of the <laughs> biggest aspects that I have found in stuck energy is that we do shallow breathe and we breathe from just about our upper mid you know, upper chest basically up and shallow breath it causes disintegration of body and oxidation levels are low. And so, you know, that's an aspect there. Energy being stuck on a mental level, anything that we take and embrace uh, that is in our life, an incident in our lives, everyday life, even a, I even learned a song can have an impact. And when that's that particular incident song, whatever it is, has such a deep core level impact that it touches our heart, it leaves an imprint. And that imprint is of cellular memory. We've been, we've thought about it. We've taken it into our body. We've taken it into our heart and we've claimed it. And when we claim that energy, whether it's a positive or a negative, it leaves that, you know, that in imprint, let's say, a cellular memory in our bodies and that can cause uh, I don't like the word blockages it's more just energy that needs to be moved hmm. well now this this kind of brings up the what I find fascinating about energy healers and and I think you're a great example is you you started out in one area and you moved to some other areas you learned some new tools as you've said you've got a toolbox you've got a big toolbox you've learned a lot of different tools and now you sort of synthesize all of these and you start to develop what is really your unique energy practice. Can, can you talk about that process or where you are with that? The process that I use is called soul toning. The aspect of the paradigm is called the reflections of harmony, knowledge of wholeness. Reflections of harmony uh, knowledge of wholeness reflects around five aspects of, of my work. Aware, awake, accept, 
oneness and onement. Those are aspects that are uh, the foundation of the work. They have nine energetic movements within them. Uh, for example, aware is the physical aspect. So we're energy and existence with breath and we create. Um, awake is a, we're coming to an awakened awareness of what mentally our truth is and uh, we come into an understanding whether that's a false belief a learned belief and that gives us power and that's our foundation for acceptance we learn that um, we honor ourselves by uh, the boundaries that we set with others with the boundaries that we set for ourselves sometimes we learn to trust ourselves because now we have truth and we have a foundation that brings us into a wisdom. Uh, under acceptance is compassion, and that falls forgiveness. Usually when I talk about forgiveness, it's forgiveness to self uh, first, and then acceptance of who we are and the love that we have for one another. Love and acceptance is at the very core of our, our inner need, our inner desires to be loved and accepted and safe and protected. Oneness is about hope and gratitude and appreciation. Those are just some of the words in the paradigm. Mm -hmm. That paradigm I use as the foundation. Soul toning is the process that I have developed to move a person through many different modalities that I have on hand to an awakened awareness and brings us into the... Uh, the paradigm to use, which is the reflections of harmony, it's named that because regardless of whether you're in awake, aware, accept, or oneness, you're constantly going back through those over and over and over again because we're every day we're brought new experiences. Mm -hmm. Those experiences in our lives bring expansion and that's knowledge and understanding of that experience. And then I list it as being, at that point, illumined. So when we're in an illumined state, then we make better decisions mm. for so, clear, clear thoughts, let's say. <laughs> yeah. So when you say soul toning, um, when I hear the word toning, I think of vocalizing toning. But you're, you're thinking of fitness toning. That's the, the way you, you use that term, right? Toning... Uh, Soul toning, I came up with that, is because it's from a very core level. Toning in general, you can have a sound, is sound, is vibration. And so you can have toning from just yourself. You can tone yourself by A, E, I, O, and U, you know, the vowel systems that identify with the chakra system. You can use drumming, bells. You can, one of the aspects that I've done in a workshop is have somebody sit in the center and have the people make all different kinds of noises around them, and that's a sense of toning. So I use soul toning as it has to do with your soul and all the aspects of energy and the vibration to bring it into a, a place of wholeness. Yeah. You know, what? I what if, when I'm hearing your words, um, I'm really fascinated by how – you know, you hear a song and you incorporate that into your healing work, you know, and it's like there isn't any aspect of life or any technique or a thought or, a, you know, an inspiration that you can't somehow possibly work into your healing. Like everything can be healing. Is that right. how you approach it? Everything can be a healing. At this, I had a I had a moment on a song and the song, the a part of the song, this was for me personally, part of the song was and you'll recognize this song, I, I can imagine. You have to go through hell to get to heaven. Yeah. One little verse in this song. And one day I was doing some work and writing some information for my, you know, the reflections of harmony. And the next thing you know, I was like, something's not right. Something, and I kept hearing this little song over my head. And it was about a belief. It was the belief that I thought that I needed to go through hell to experience a low aspect in my life in order to get to a higher a higher heaven a higher place you know and when i tuned into that it was autumn it it's what's wonderful about this word it can be just an instantly it's just instantly you have that realization you can shift that belief and then have a new truth and you move forward from there 
Mm. It's just a really mm. This is uh, again. We could talk about this this topic for a long time. I what I one thing I like to do with our podcast is keep coming back to reoccurring themes, and we've had this idea a few times now that there's a mind body unity, and we've talked a little bit about it here today. Can you can you give us your best explanation of this this mind body unity? I mean. We are a spirit, we're of substance, we're of breath, we're of air, we're of fire, we're all these things. And, you know, how is it that by understanding that unity, uh, that can bring about better healing processes? Anything you want to say on that whole subject? I, you know, I do believe that it starts with the unit, understanding that we are all one in the unity consciousness. And going from that unity of energetic level to an individual level, an individual level to say our minds are the most powerful things going. You know, they're greater than any computer, any system that's been developed. We were gifted with such great gift of a mind. And how we use our mind to create through our words, we develop that consciousness of knowledge and that knowledge we use through our our verbiage, our verbiage then creates our life. And when we have that verbiage being created out of the mind, how it affects our body internally and externally and all those around us. So the mind and body, you know, connection is there. Even to a, if you wanted to narrow it down to your mind and heart, your heart's the very, you know, your, your window to your soul. And so when your mind and your window of your soul, your body on that level are out of alignment, your conscious and subconscious, you know, even using your mind, your subconscious and your consciousness are out of alignment. In hypnotherapy, that's what you try to bring together in alignment of that. You know, there's a lot of modalities that you use to align that. And I believe that that's, that's very beneficial. That'll, and that's what I learned in hypnotherapy. That aligns your mind. But if you don't align your mind to your heart, your truth, then you lack a foundation in order to move forward in what your truths are. And when you have an established truth, then you can, you can work with that. If you never test your truths, then you don't know if they're good for you or not. You don't know where they came from. You don't know how they were established. If you don't dig to that level, and, and it oftentimes it's not even uh, the process of having to understand it at a really basic level and having to experience it again. It's just the awareness that needs to be made and the emotion that was online when that emotion and clear the emotion of it. And that brings you into a, a, a whole complete and perfect person. We're already there. It's just aligning with what, who we are. Aligning with already what is. Yeah, I like exactly. that. I like that metaphor. Well, it's been a fascinating conversation. Uh, anything really important uh, that you wanted to talk about that we missed? Just the, you know, not really, just the importance of the mind and body and, you know, quantum physics, how that's played into now a greater understanding for the medical community to the energetic community. I'm a Reiki master. I do hands-on healing. So I've been, that's, I consider that a gift. Uh, I believe that all of us have the ability to do that because we all have the ability to heal ourselves. That's all healing is self-healing. For me, uh, dealing with the client and self-healing, it's bringing them into the awareness of their truth so that self-healing can occur. I think that really, that really gets to the core of it. Once you get to a deep believing of what you believe is true and find out which ones are false, uh, that's, a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good recipe, I think, for, uh, for healing. Well, Judy, what, uh, how can people get a hold of you? I am currently at uh, Wellsprings, um, and it's a awesome healing center here that yeah, in Pittsburgh, right. just right down the street from AGH, right. and uh, do work out of with Dr. Joy, and it's uh, a great place. That's great. Do you have what's your uh, email that people can email you? My email is interiorchanges at aol.com. 
Okay, great. I like the interior changes. My daughter and I, numerous years ago, were riding to Birmingham, Alabama, and I was trying to think of a name for for what I do in my email, obviously, and interior changes. And she said, don't you think that sounds a little bit like a decorating, you know? And I said, not with <laughs> And we laughed and I said, I think that with my work, there it will not be mistaken that it's not interior uh, decorating that's going to be changing. It's lives that changed. I that's just right. recently had a client that I've had for about eight years ago. She said to me, because most recently her son needed some work and she called me because he's here in Pittsburgh and now she's in Virginia Beach. She said to me, I'll never forget the first time we met. I ask you what you do for a living. And she said, your answer was, you ch I change people's lives. And she said that was very <laughs> astounding to her at the time. And after she worked with me, she said to me that I had that profession down, my opening line down perfect. I change people's <laughs> lives. <laughs> well, that's great. I, I I believe you do, and I really appreciate, again, uh, the session we had last week, and appreciate you being on our podcast here today. Thank you very much, Lynn. You bet. So that'll do it for today. Uh, again, big thanks out to Mike Sorgatron uh, of Sorgatron Thank Media. You. Actually, Mike Sorg of Sorgatron Media. And uh, all the work he's been putting in behind the scenes, helping us stay on the air, even when I'm just a one-eyed person here this week. Join us again next week for another edition of the podcast for the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. I'm Sven Hosford. You can find us on Facebook, iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and, of course, YouTube. Uh, so uh, we'll see you again next week. And until then, yins, be careful out there. Mm -hmm.